Established in 1942, the Science Talent Search is the nation's oldest and most highly regarded science competition for high school seniors. Since then, nearly 150,000 students have applied, 23,000 have been named scholars, and almost 3,000 have traveled to Washington, D.C. Past competitors have been awarded nearly $27 million and some very prestigious prizes. The 40 finalists are the scientific and engineering leaders of tomorrow. They'll shape the future and invent the world our children will live in. Welcome to this very special evening, the awards ceremony for the 79th annual Regeneron Science Talent Search. I'm Monica Samayoa with Oregon Public Broadcasting, and it is my honor to host tonight's program. This evening is obviously quite different than how we traditionally celebrate our Regeneron STS finalists. Most obvious is that they're all remotely located around the country, joining us by video here tonight. Each finalist is wearing their Regeneron STS medal, signifying their membership in this elite corps of scientists. For all of us, this year has proven that our lives require a certain amount of resilience. For these finalists, resilience is a quality that has been a part of their character all along, measured in their achievement of belonging to this special group that we celebrate this evening. It is my pleasure to be joined by these incredible finalists, their families, and all of you at home. This evening, we will hear from Maya Ajmera, President and CEO of Society for Science and the Public and publisher of Science News. Prior to leading the society, she founded and led for 18 years the Global Fund for Children, a group that serves the world's most vulnerable children. Maya is also an award-winning children's book author, has held several academic appointments, and is herself an alumna of the 1985 Science Talent Search. We'll also hear from another SDS alumnus, Dr. Leonard Schleifer, who is a co-founder, president, and CEO of Regeneron. Under Lent's leadership, Regeneron has grown into one of the world's, mo world's leading science and technology companies, and it's known for its unique, science-driven, innovative culture and robust pipeline of clinical stage therapies. You can learn more about our finalists and our presenters by clicking on the biographies in the panel adjacent to this video in our virtual event platform. Now, as many of you know, the Regeneron Science Talent Search is the nation's oldest and most prestigious science competition for high school seniors. This program identifies, engages, and inspires the next generation of scientific leaders. Program alumni have made extraordinary contributions to science and have gone on to win many of the world's most coveted science and math honors. Thanks to the generous support of Regeneron, the Science Talent Search is rewarding more students and teachers for taking on the challenge of bringing true scientific inquiry and engineering solutions to life through research by high school students. Tonight's finalists were selected from nearly 2,000 entrants based on the originality and creativity of their scientific research, as well as their achievement and leadership both inside and outside the classroom. Let's meet some of them now. Hi, my name is Jigdeep Bhatia. Uh, I go to Wachung Hills Regional High School in Warren, New Jersey. Jigdeep was the founder of Hills X, an entrepreneurship club at his high school. In his spare time, he enjoys programming video games and creating 3D origami. His advice for young scientists is to ask a question and then be relentless in finding the answer. My name is Amok Bendiger, and I go to the University School of Milwaukee in Mequon, Wisconsin. While Amog could once recite the first Harry Potter book from memory and would love to be a Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher at Hogwarts, he more realistically hopes to become a research professor. He hopes to study data science and statistics. I am Andrew Burton. I went to John F. Kennedy High School in Belmore, New York. Andrew thinks climate change is one of today's gravest issues and intends to study environmental science. He credits the Beatles with his interest in science research and their songs for inspiring him to put his desire to help people into action.
I'm Cynthia Chen. I'm a graduating senior from the Harker School in San Jose, California. Cynthia was the founder of Opportunity X, a student-led nonprofit establishing science research programs at underrepresented schools. She was inspired to get involved in science research by the California droughts, and since then has devoted each of her projects to tackling urgent real-world problems. My name is Lauren Chen, and I went to Dutch Fork High School in Irmo, South Carolina. One of Lauren's most vivid childhood memories is learning her first multiplication tables from her grandfather. She's interested in continuing to pursue mathematics, but might explore other fields. Advice she encourages all young scientists to follow. My name is Holly Chang from Horace Greeley High School in Chappaqua, New York. Holly used to watch the grad students in her father's lab and worry that by the time she grew old enough, there wouldn't be any problems left to solve. She now intends to study biology and knows there are many unknowns still to investigate. Hi, my name is Brendan Crotty. I am from Muskogee, Oklahoma, and I am homeschooled. A talented metal worker, Brendan enjoys crafting custom jewelry and sculptures from non-traditional materials. He dreams of one day owning a company focused on developing environmentally friendly pollution reduction systems. My name is Ankur Stubbin, I'm 18 years old and I go to Signature High School in Evansville, Indiana. Uncush enjoys a wide variety of activities, including basketball, playing the alto saxophone, and competitive chess. He's motivated by the words of his father. If it is worth doing, it is worth doing well. My name is Maria Liberty Fields from University Liggett School in Gross Point Woods, Michigan. Maria founded the nonprofit literacy and tutoring program, GROW, Generate Real Opportunities and Wonder. Passionate about science, government, and philanthropy, Maria aspires to do it all, have a lab, hold public office, and one day serve as Supreme Court Justice. I'm Ari Firester, and I go to Hunter College High School in New York, New York. Ari plays klezmer as well as classical violin. He enjoys composing electronic klezmer tunes. He believes that many of the problems we face could have solutions rooted in nature and would like to continue studying how to apply biomimicry in robots. Hi, my name is Victoria Graff. I went to Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology in Alexandria, Virginia. Victoria believes that the best way to encourage girls in STEM is to foster their curiosity and provide them with role models. She hopes to be one of them and advises all young scientists that there is no dream too small or goal too high. Hi, I'm Xander Hill. I recently graduated from base of Scottsdale and I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. For Xander, the most important part of science involvement is studying in the context of what you enjoy. Science is in everything around us, he says, and all you have to do is go and find it. Xander plans to study mathematics. My name is Raina Jane. I go to Greenwich High School and I'm from Greenwich, Connecticut. According to friends and family, Raina's drive and grit are what sets her apart. She takes inspiration from Margaret Hamilton, the woman who wrote the code that took Apollo 11 to the moon. In October of 2019, Raina completed her first full marathon. We'll continue meeting all of our finalists in a moment. First, let's hear from President, CEO of Society for Science and Public, Maya Ajmera. Thank you, Monica, and welcome everyone to the 79th annual Regeneron Science Talent Search. I can't even begin to tell you what an amazing week this has been and how unbelievably impressed I am with the young people we are celebrating tonight. In the past, I have talked about the importance of grit and determination, and the class of 2020 has that in spades. Saying that 2020 has been challenging is an understatement. But these young scientists and engineers are resilient. When faced with challenges, they don't shy away. They face them head on. 
Among this group of 40, one finalist helped to develop a new type of ventilator, while another developed computational models to help add to the body of research around COVID-19. They have also tutored and mentored young students and organized relief efforts. I believe it is during challenging times that we are pushed to dream big and pivot in new ways. I believe in the power of thinking big. I want to tell you a personal story. After I graduated from college, I had the wonderful opportunity to travel throughout South and Southeast Asia. On a hot, dusty day in Bhubaneswar, India, I stepped onto a train platform and was struck by an unusual sight. Amid the chaos of the train platform, a group of children and a teacher were sitting in a circle, completely engrossed in simple learning exercises. When the lesson ended, I approached the teacher and learned that the children lived, played, and begged on the train platforms. They did not go to school. I learned that a local organization and its desire to provide the children with a pathway out of poverty was meeting the children where they were by providing an education, clothing, and food. Here was someone who, when faced with an incredibly challenging environment, found a new way to teach. On that train platform many years ago, I had my moment of obligation. I thought this community isn't only one facing these types of challenges. There are under-resourced communities all over the world I knew I needed to do something, and that moment led me to found the Global Fund for Children, an organization dedicating to supporting the world's most vulnerable children, which has now served over 10 million young people. I had another moment of obligation when I joined the Society for Science and the Public in 2014. I wanted to ensure that every young person in this country with an interest in STEM had an opportunity to pursue that passion. As a child, I had wonderful opportunities to engage in scientific inquiry. I am an STS alum, grew up reading science news. I wanted to make sure that every child could have similar opportunities. To help achieve that goal, I, along with my extraordinary team, launched a suite of outreach and equity programs that are reaching millions of students across the country. There is still more work to do, but we are making an impact. I call on all of the finalists with us tonight to find their moment of obligation. Is now that moment when our world is facing so many challenges from a global pandemic to climate change to a social justice crisis? I call on you to use your scientific and analytical skills to make the world a better place. We are living in a moment where science is more important than ever before. Scientific discovery is quickly evolving, and I, for one, am excited to see what the future has in store. Find your moment of obligation and then dream big. Continue to display the grit intellectual curiosity, analytical ability, and dedication that helped you get to the Regeneron Science Talent Search. Dreaming big is also something we do at the Society. If it weren't for those big dreams, we would not have had the vision to develop our first virtual competition. I am thrilled that together with Regeneron, we were able to continue this competition now in its 79th year and provide tonight's finalists with a platform to showcase their science. I would like to thank Regeneron for their generosity and their support of these 40 students and their support as we turned on a dime to create a virtual event from scratch. Len Schleifer, George Yankopoulos, Hala Mirza and team, we thank you for your generosity, your leadership and your friendship. We are so grateful for all that you do to invest in the next generation of talent. On behalf of the Society for Science and the Public Board of Trustees and our entire team, congratulations to the amazing 40 finalists, the leaders of tomorrow. 
both the Society and Regeneron are eagerly looking forward to following your contributions and accomplishments in the years to come. Godspeed. Thank you, Maya. And thanks to your entire team at the Society for all the work and support you provide to our nation's aspiring young scientists. Now, let's meet a few more of tonight's honored finalists. My name is Anushka Jetley. I go to Friendswood High School in Friendswood, Texas. Anushka is the founder of Friendswood Food for Charity, a club that sells home-cooked meals and donates the proceeds to nonprofit organizations. She believes striving for excellence is important in all areas of life. As Woody from Toy Story would say, reach for the sky. Hi, my name is Helena Young, and I went to Buell's High School in Gainesville, Florida. Helena has served as the president and strategy director of Coder Girls, an international computer science nonprofit with 43 chapters in over 10 countries. While she doesn't have a specific dream job in mind, she aspires to spread as many smiles as she can. Hi, I'm Nathan Kavi. I graduated from Acton Boxborough Regional High School in Acton, Massachusetts. Nithin intends to major in mathematics and credits his mentor for giving him the independence to discover things for himself. He believes it is important for students to have similar opportunities to explore beyond the classroom. Hello, my name is Olivia Rose Kravitsky. I recently graduated from Bergen County Academies in Hackensack, New Jersey. Olivia speaks fluent Russian and was the vice president of her school's National Spanish Honor Society. Her mantra is resilience and optimism, and she believes that while science can be intimidating, she would never have found her passion if she was too afraid to try. My name is Caitlin Kuncher, and I go to Dutch Fork High School in Irmo, South Carolina. When she's not doing research, Caitlin enjoys experimenting in the kitchen. She loves following Food Network and Gordon Ramsay recipes and creating her own dishes too. Her dream job includes working as a science documentary screenwriter or founding a biotech company. I'm Rupert Lee. I went to Jesuit High School in Portland, Oregon. Rupert co-founded his high school's Zero Robotics Club and also led the Science Bowl, Math Club, and Oregon American Regions Mathematics League. He values the lasting camaraderie of science and math competitions and camps, especially in connecting him to people around the globe. Hi, I'm Jason Lowe from the Davidson Academy in Reno, Nevada. Although undecided on his major, Jason enjoys math and physics. His advice to younger students interested in these disciplines is to seek out local professors. He also encourages that in research, even a little progress can be an important step. My name is Kira McCreary. I go to North Shore High School in Glenhead, New York. Kira was the editor-in-chief of her school newspaper and has served as a volunteer at an equine therapy program for individuals with special needs. Kira believes climate change is one of today's toughest challenges. My name is Nadine Meister and I'm from Centennial High School in Ellicott City, Maryland. Nadine is a multi-instrumentalist who has performed at Carnegie Hall and as part of the National Honor Band of America. She enjoys splitting difficult solo pieces and playing them with friends, and values the second family she's made through her love of music and science. My name is Sonia Michalak, and I go to Hopewell Valley Central High School in Titusville, New Jersey. Sonia was chosen to represent the United States at World Water Week in Switzerland and is an accomplished scuba diver. In 2016, Sonia's definition of macroinvertebrate was published by Encyclopedia Britannica, and she has collected macroinvertebrate samples on a diving trip in the Arctic Circle. Hello, my name is Arjun Nirvanan. I am a graduated senior from University High School in Irvine, California. Arjun believes that the issue of cyberbullying is compounded by bias and over-censoring in the AI algorithms developed to solve it, a problem addressed by his project. His hobbies include biking, running, and playing the Carnatic violin in live concerts with his brother. Hi, I'm Annie Stojic. 
I attended Munster High School in Munster, Indiana. Annie is a featured STEM leader and role model in Study Sync and McGraw Hills Digital Indiana High School English textbook. Annie says she was born with goggles on and a beaker in hand. She plans to study electrical engineering and artificial intelligence. We'll finish with one more group of finalist introductions in just a moment. As a leader in biotechnology, Regeneron invents life-transforming medicines for people with serious diseases, and they're deeply invested in fostering the next generation of scientific talent. They're also on the front lines, working on treatments for COVID-19. Regeneron is led by two alums of the Science Talent Search, and we are thrilled to hear from co-founder, president, and CEO, Dr. Leonard Schleifer. Good evening. My name is Len Schleifer, and it's my great honor to have the opportunity to join you at the 2020 Regeneron Science Talent Search Awards Ceremony. On behalf of Regeneron, congratulations to every one of the finalists. No matter what happens later tonight, you are all winners. The 40 Regeneron Science Talent Search finalists we recognize tonight represent the most promising young scientific and mathematical minds. Some of you may not know that I've had a 50 year secret mission of getting on the finalist stage at the Science Talent Search. It's a mission that dates back to 1970. I, like many of you, was a pretty good student back in high school. And so I decided to enter what was then called the Westinghouse Science Talent Search with a geometry project. However, Unlike the 40 finalists with us this evening, I didn't hit it big. Alas, just a semi-finalist. I never made it to finalist week. I never knew what it was like. But I dusted myself off and I went off to college. I then earned my medical degree and a PhD and became a neurologist. Eventually, I founded Regeneron and have served as the CEO for the last 31 years. So I guess you can say I did okay. But when the opportunity arose a few years ago for Regeneron to become the title sponsor of the Science Talent Search, we jumped at it. Not only because Regeneron is deeply committed to supporting and nurturing top scientific talent, but it was finally my chance to write what I can only attribute to an egregious judging error and get on stage with the finalists. Sure, it's virtual this year, but I think it still counts. But in all seriousness, I am so proud to be here with all of you and so proud that the Science Talent Search bears the Regeneron name. It feels particularly meaningful to celebrate your achievements in 2020. The pandemic has brought tremendous pain and suffering to so many. I hope that you are listening safely and at appropriate social distance and have been able to navigate this time without significant hardships. Despite all this tragedy, there have been glimmers that have given me hope. It's been a year that's focused the world's attention on science. Some of us feel it should always have been there, but the attention of the public and governments is easily distracted. The COVID-19 public health crisis has forced world leaders and society at large to recognize the importance of broad and ongoing investment in science and the perils of not doing so. This terrible moment has also helped society to remember who our real heroes are. They are the doctors, the nurses, other healthcare workers providing frontline care. They are the hospital and transit workers keeping our essential buildings and services clean and operational. And very importantly, perhaps most importantly for tonight's perspective, they are the scientists doing research that will save our people, our economy, and our society. I'm proud that some of those scientists are right here at Regeneron. We started a COVID-19 antibody cocktail program in early January, as first word of the virus started to hit the news. Six months later, we have one of the most promising programs in late stage human clinical trials. Our drug, which is being studied as both a treatment and as a prevention, 
has the potential to provide an important bridge for society until a safe and effective vaccine is broadly available. And I promise you, we are moving as fast, even faster than humanly possible to study this medicine and make it widely and affordably available. For now, this is the last chapter in a mission that has stayed the same since we founded Regeneron more than 30 years ago. My long-term partner at Regeneron, George Ancopoulos, and I set out to build a company that could invent medicines for people with serious diseases. A straightforward goal, but easier said than done. Lucky for me, George was not only a finalist, but a winner of the science talent search, so he was clearly up to the task. To deliver new medicines consistently and repeatedly over three decades, we had to first build the right culture. And at Regeneron, we have a culture where the scientists have always been and always will be the heroes. It has been a long and arduous journey for Regeneron. There were many times during the first 25 years that we were not sure we had the funding and support to continue. In fact, we lost money every single year for 25 straight years. Lots of money, not a very good business. We didn't even have our first drug approved until more than 20 years after we started. But ultimately, we stayed focused on our simple mission, and that has made us successful in every way. We've brought new medicines to people with cancer, vision robbing eye diseases, debilitating allergic and inflammatory diseases. We have also generated financial success and have been able to reward our hardworking team fairly. And we hope that our innovative approach will deliver a meaningful drug that might be used to prevent and treat COVID-19. And we hope we can continue as a leader in innovation for years to come. At Regeneron, we know in our bones that science holds the promise of providing critical solutions that can make our world safer, more equitable, and more secure. The 40 young scientists we are honoring this evening are among the most powerful people on the earth. They have superpowers that allow them to change the world with important discoveries and inventions. You are the heroes of tomorrow. At Regeneron, we want to be part of supporting this next generation of great innovators. That's why we support the Regeneron Science Talent Search and the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair and many other efforts. But we don't stop at supporting only those who rise to the top level of talent competitions. We also invest in science education and equity programs that level the playing field for students who don't come from privilege. We are equally proud of these young people who overcome difficult circumstances to pursue a scientific path. The world needs as many heroes as we can get from all backgrounds. Your experience at the Science Talent Search is one step on your future path and one demonstration of the powerful and important things you can achieve. I was a semifinalist. I founded a company that's on the front lines of responding to the greatest public and economic crises of our lifetimes. You, as finalists, well, I can only imagine what you'll achieve. I know you'll use your powers for good, and I wish all of you the very best of luck. The world is counting on you. Have a great evening. Thank you, Len. And again, tremendous thanks to our sponsor, Regeneron, and their commitment to science education. Now, let's move to our final group of young scientists. Hi, my name is Lillian K. Peterson, and I go to Los Alamos High School in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Inspired by Norman Borlaug, the father of the Green Revolution, Lillian has worked for several years to develop technologies that have the potential to reduce hunger across the globe. She is also an avid trail runner.
My name is Alina Fulner. I went to Canyon Crest Academy and I'm from San Diego, California. Alina plans to pursue a degree in either chemical or biomedical engineering. Her hobbies include running, hiking, and cross-country skiing, and she dreams of traveling the world as a professional backpacker. Hello, my name is Catherine St. George, and I go to John F. Kennedy High School in Belmore, New York. Catherine intends to study mathematics or biochemistry with a minor in journalism. Maybe she will write for Science News. She advises young scientists not to be scared of statistical insignificance. It's valuable to know what doesn't work. My name is Anaya Thomas, um, and I go to Bergen County Academies in Hackensack, New Jersey. Anaya plans to study biological sciences. She is interested in integrating her advocacy work with her love of science and thinks apathy is today's greatest threat and that the solution lies in getting people to care about their futures and each other. I'm Adrian Thompson and I attend the Wellington School in Columbus, Ohio. In addition to her interest in molecular biology, Adrienne enjoys dance, photography, and debating modern political issues with her friends. She believes that with improved communication between scientists, the government, and the public, great societal progress is possible. I'm Rohan Wag from Sunset High School in Portland, Oregon. Rohan enjoys racquetball and basketball and is a devoted fan of the Portland Trailblazers. He plans to study electrical engineering aided by his favorite words of encouragement, never stop asking why. My name is Ella Wesson. I went to Manhasset High School in Manhasset, New York. Ella has played the flute and piccolo in the Metropolitan Youth Orchestra of New York. She also makes a great apple pie. Ella would like to study public health and aspires to be the United States Surgeon General. Hello, I'm Alec Westover. I go to Belmont High School and I'm from Belmont, Massachusetts. At five years old, Alec was already learning to program from his father. He would eventually go on to found his high school's hackathon club. Alec hopes to continue his studies in math or computer science and dreams of working in the Google AI division. My name is Brian Wu, and I just graduated from the Horseman School in Bronx, New York. Founder of the aerospace engineering startup Apex Steel Innovations and the aviation website Flight Level 360, Brian has presented his research project at NASA headquarters. He dreams of being an explorer of the cosmos. I'm Eva Yixie from Bronx High School Science in Bronx, New York. Eva won the Gold Award in the Asia Pacific Harmonica Festival, one of the world's largest harmonica events. She also plays the piano and is an avid artist and crafter. Hi, I'm Ellie Yang and I went to Parkway Central High School in Chesterfield, Missouri. Ellie's goal is reducing the number of lives taken in mass shootings. She chose to pursue science research after recognizing her own responsibility to take action and help protect her community in the face of gun violence. Ellie plans to study computer science. I'm Kevin Yang and I'm from Fairview High School in Boulder, Colorado. Kevin's first introduction to hydrogels was the Grow Monster expandable water toy he would use to terrorize his stuffed animals. He would later conduct research on their expanding properties for a very different purpose, filling a brain aneurysm. My name is Jake Yasonic. I'm from Homestead High School in Mequon, Wisconsin. In first grade, Jacob used to scribble notes on NASA articles printed by his father. Close to 15 science-related magazine subscriptions later, he says doing research was a natural extension of his earlier interests. Jacob hopes to be a data scientist or machine learning researcher. Such an exciting 
and inspiring group. You might have noticed that we only met 38 finalists. We'd like to recognize two finalists that were not able to participate in the virtual program. Michaela Gates from Valencia High School in Las Lunas, New Mexico, and Faye Yu from Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts. Congratulations to the entire 2020 class of the Regeneron Science Talent Search. It's an annual tradition for Regeneron STS to name a class speaker. This recognition is named in honor of Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg. Dr. Seaborg was a Nobel laureate in chemistry, an advisor to 10 US presidents, a key player in the Manhattan Project, a strong advocate of nuclear nonproliferation and discoverer of 10 elements. It's especially exciting to point out that he is one of only two people to ever have an element named for him while still living. Seaborium. Dr. Seaborg served as chairman of the Board of Society for Science in the Public. In this capacity, he was a mentor and inspiration to hundreds of STS finalists. To honor his legacy and memory each year, finalists choose from their own ranks the student whom they believe best exemplify Glenn Seaborg's ability to inspire in others the passion for science that these finalists live and breathe. This year's Glenn T. Seaborg Award is presented to Helena Jung from Buholtz High School in Gainesville, Florida. On behalf of Regeneron and the Society, congratulations. Let's hear from Helena now. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for that amazing introduction. One of my fondest memories as a young scientist took place at the Florida Museum of Natural History when I was seven years old. Standing in the nation's largest research facility devoted to moths and butterflies, I was absolutely awestruck as I gazed around at the thousands upon thousands of butterfly species covering the towering walls, frozen in time yet seemingly spiraling up into the sky. On that very day, I learned something about butterfly wings that inspired the very project that led me to become a Regeneron Science Talent Search finalist. As Regeneron STS finalists, we are some of the youngest pioneers at the forefront of scientific innovation and advancement. One of our most important jobs is stated on our navy blue STS shirts, be inspired. Throughout the past few days, we have not only been inspired by our amazing judges, prime time field trip hosts, and other mentors, but we've also been inspired by one another. Personally, someone who has inspired me to become a better person is fellow finalist Eva, who has battled obstacles I can barely even begin to comprehend, starting over in a new country after fleeing from political persecution. And something that happened more recently, Jason managed to stay focused and carry on even though he almost had to evacuate in the middle of judging due to a wildfire near his home. Even more inspiring, the support we finalists have for one another as we work to overcome these and other obstacles, including the COVID-19 pandemic. I also find myself motivated by the tremendous passion and drive we all share. Looking at the big picture, I don't think any of us knew what to expect from this experience. The very first virtual Regeneron Science Talent Search, but I have been continually positively surprised by the stimulating programming and fun activities such as our virtual game night and alumni dinner with incredible remarks from alums Dr. Jang and Dr. Stokes and our virtual escape room. Go team, I don't know. And yes, I don't know was our team name. This week wouldn't have been possible without Regeneron and the Society for Science and the Public. One more little tidbit that was inspiring to me. A few days before the competition began, I emailed Miss Ali Stifel, the director of the program, and I received an automatic reply saying, I am in back-to-back -back meetings all day and will reply to your message after hours or later this evening. This showed me how dedicated and how hard the society staff are working to not only ensure this event is memorable, but to also allow the dreams of so many students come true amidst the chaos the world is in right now. Words alone are unable to do justice to how grateful we finalists are for this tremendous opportunity you've given us. While one of our jobs as scientists is to be inspired, Another job, and perhaps the most important job, 
is to inspire others, especially the young people in the audience tonight and in our lives, the future generation. Through Public Day and hopefully this speech, we finalists have shown that inspiration is everywhere and anyone can be a scientist as long as you think big, ask questions and pursue your passions. With hard work and an open mind, you too can conquer anything and perhaps become a Regeneron Science Talent Search finalist yourself in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Helena. It goes without saying, that the Regeneron Science Talent Search is a rigorous competition. From the initial group of entrants, qualified applications were reviewed by a panel of evaluators. 300 scholars were then selected based on their exceptional research skills, commitment to academics, and a promise as a scientist. Those selected and their schools each received $2,000. In total, $600,000 was distributed to schools across the country this year to support STEM education. From those 300 scholars, the prestigious Final 40 were selected by our esteemed judging panel for the scientific rigor and world-changing potential of their research. Each finalist has received $25,000. During the competition, finalists presented their research to this panel and participated in interviews designed to evaluate overall knowledge of science, problem solving, and innovative thinking. We'd like to recognize this year's judges. Chair of the STS Judging Panel, Dr. Sudarshan Sawate, University of Maine. Vice Chair, Dr. Jason Valentine, Vanderbilt University. Dr. Irene Chen, 1995, STS alumnus, University of California, Los Angeles. Dr. Jacinta Conrad, 1995, STS alumnus, University of Houston. Dr. Kalina Craig Henderson, National Science Foundation. Dr. Samit Desgupta, 1995, STS alumnus, Duke University. Dr. Philip Deschamps, University of Maryland, College Park. Dr. Jeanette Epps, NASA Johnson Space Center. Dr. Jonah Erlenbacher, 1987, STS alumnus, John Hopkins University. Dr. Jason Kahn, University of Maryland, College Park. Dr. Jennifer Kalish, 1994, STS alumnus, University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Jesse Margiata, Mach 20. Dr. Carlos Suarez Quian, Georgetown University Medical Center. Dr. Caroline Uller, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Dr. Christine Willett, 1989, STS alumnus, University of Mississippi. Dr. Melanie Matchett Wood, Harvard University. And Dr. Andrew Yeager, University of Arizona. A big thank you to all our judging panel who rose to the challenge to meet virtually and dedicated time and resources to ensure our finalists had an extensive adjudication. Also a big thank you to the parents, teachers, mentors, and the many others who have nurtured these young scientists and helped them achieve so much so early in their careers. And now, for the moment we've all been anticipating, the announcement of our top 10 winners. The 10th place winner and the recipient of a $40,000 award from University High School in Irvine, California, Arjun Nirvanan. The ninth place winner and the recipient of a $50,000 award from Sunset High School in Portland, Oregon, Rohan Wag. The eighth place winner and the recipient of a $60,000 award from the Wellington School in Columbus, Ohio, Adrian Elizabeth Thompson. The 
the seventh place winner and the recipient of a $70,000 award. From Belmont High School in Belmont, Massachusetts, Alec Westover. The sixth place winner and the recipient of an $80,000 award. From John F. Kennedy High School in Belmore, New York, Catherine St. George. The fifth place winner and the recipient of a $90,000 award. For Bergen County Academies in Hackensack, New Jersey, Anaya Thomas. The fourth place winner and the recipient of a $100,000 award. From Jesuit High School, Portland, Oregon, Rupert Michael Lee. The third place winner and the recipient of a $150,000 award. From Hickory Hill Academy Homeschool in Muskogee, Oklahoma, Brendan Crotty. The second place winner and the recipient of a $175,000 award. From Watchung Hills Regional High School in Warren, New Jersey, Jigdik Batia. And the first place winner and the recipient of a $250,000 award. From Los Alamos High School in Los Alamos, New Mexico, Lillian K. Peterson. A big congratulations to our top 10 Regeneron Science Talent Search winners. On behalf of the Society for Science and the Public of Regeneron, thank you again for joining us for this evening's broadcast. If you're an incoming high school senior watching this evening and are inspired by this group, Learn more about Regeneron STS and apply for the 2021 program. Applications are now open through November 12th. I want to congratulate all of our Regeneron STS finalists and thank each and every one of you for inspiring me. I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Thank you and good night.